All right, y'all. So a couple weeks ago, I ranked the Halloween franchise because, you know, the 13th Halloween movie finally came out. We got to watch it. We all, I, you know, I just thought it would be cool to, to rank it. I had a lot of fun doing that. Now, at the end of Horror Fest 2022, we ended it with a big bang and we covered the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So I figured, since I just recently rewatched them, why not right now? rank the franchise right so if you want to check out my full thoughts as as well as the panel we went for like two and a half hours talking about all nine movies in this franchise and yes we do include freddy versus jason and the remake um we had a great conversation definitely check out that video i'll throw a link in the description below but having just rewatched them where do they lie what are the best what are the worst well <clears throat> As Joe Corallo would say, come on, the first one's the best, then you got some that are your favorites, and then who gives a shit about the rest? That's basically how it breaks down, so let's get into it. At number nine, I got the 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I understand the intention behind this movie, I guess, but it doesn't work. It's, what's his name, Jackie Earl Haley or whatever? He's trying to do something different. When you have a character like Freddy, who has only ever been portrayed by one dude, Robert England, it's hard to step in those shoes. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard to follow in those footsteps. And he tried a different approach. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe he tried to do a more sinister approach. And in the movie, they tried to do this more sinister approach where they were leaning more into the child molestation factor trying to make him more creepy well one of the things that made freddy work so much even in the earliest film is the charm freddy has no charm here and it's hard to have a character have charm when he's a child molester so they toned that down on freddy and over time he became this very comedic character for good or for bad but for the most part i like it it does not work for me on this one a decent enough cast doing, I guess, the best for their pay with their script. But ultimately, not a good movie. And at number eight, A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Yo, I hate this movie. I hate this movie so much. It's boring. It's so damn boring. And it's got that dumbass bug-eyed kid that just pisses me the fuck off, right? Like, Freddy. So it's Alice's kid. First of all, I still don't forgive them for killing, was it Kirsten or Kristen? What was Patricia Arquette's character that got played by Tuesday Night in part four? I still don't forgive them for like veering away from that story into Alice. Alice is insufferable to me in this movie. I hate it. I hate this movie so much. So she's in, she's got a kid, right? She's got a kid and, and Freddie's trying to use the kid to like come into the real world or whatever. It just doesn't work for me. It's boring. It's lame. That being said, it's got some really good effects that were definitely cut by the MPAA, but some really great effects. When dude's on the bike and he's like in his dream, turning into the, like the bike cyborg thing, that shit's awesome. There's some really great effects and cinematography in this movie, but the story is whack as fuck. It is by far the worst of the Robert England movies, in my opinion. At number seven, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. This is the movie that did the the, unfor the unforgivable act in this franchise, which is kill momentum, okay? So they had this movie, Nightmare on Elm Street. It was a hit. Then they had a second one, a sequel. Didn't It did good, but the response wasn't as right but it was still it was still good it was still there then he did the third one that really people still look at that third one they were like it's one of the best and then what do you do you take all the survivors of of the third movie and you kill them the fuck off in the first act okay it adds this element of oh shit anything can happen but then it also adds this element of what are you gonna do now so the best thing this movie's got is alice's brother who's like a kung fu karate obsessed ninja kid who likes to listen to drama-rama. I love that bit. It's got some decent effects, got some decent kills, but overall, story-wise, like what the fuck is your problem? You're trying to 
wow us too much. You're trying to subvert our expectations way too much because you don't have a compelling story or main character to 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 thread this movie through. So for me, don't really like it. It's kind of mid. It's like below mid, right? Number seven, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Master. And number six, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Funny thing about this movie. When we covered this movie on PCP Movie Night for the end of Horror Fest, at one point, Verno asked everybody, because everybody gave this movie a raving review, aside from Fable. Fable does not like this movie, right? Or no, Fable likes this movie. It's a new nightmare Fable doesn't like. I think we all loved this movie for the most part. But Verno mentioned, was everybody scared that they were the only person that liked this movie? That was the vibe we were all getting. That we were going to be the only people to give this movie a high rating. We really all liked it. I love this movie. It's cheesy. It's stupid. It's veering more into the comedic aspect of Freddy more than any other Elm Street movie. But that works for me. That works for me so well for this movie for its time. I've said this on this channel. Excuse me. I've said this on this channel. I've said this on my podcast. I've said this multiple times. All of these extended horror franchises, if they get to a number six, number six where they just go, fuck it. Number six, Halloween, Curse of Michael Myers. Fuck it. We're just going ham. He's impregnated his fucking niece. We're going nuts. Uh, Jason Lives, the sixth Friday the 13th movie. Fuck it. We're raising him back from the dead with a lightning bolt to the chest through a shovel. He comes back. Unstoppable fucking zombie. Fuck yeah. Love that, by the way. Love that. Number six, let's kill Freddy. Let's do it ridiculously. Let's lean into the comedy. I love how this plays with this idea of Freddy having a, a, an offspring. And they do a good job for your first time watching. I remember watching this as a kid. I was so hyped for this movie coming out. I didn't get to see it in the theater, but I did get to see it when it first arrived on, on, on video. I remember going to Blockbuster or wherever it was. Maybe it was the local place. We went to Primetime. We went to Barry's video, and we went to another one I can't remember the name of. But I remember when this was first available. Like, really? we got to watch Freddy's Dead. I, watched, I loved this movie as a kid. I love it today. It's comedic, it's ridiculous, it's fun, it's a fair send-off to Freddy. I love the idea of, they really, at that time, they, as a, when I was a kid, they fooled me with the whole bait and switch in this movie. Like, oh, it's this dude. Oh, no, it's her. And then they have the 3D gimmick. Man, whatever. I love this movie. So at number six, I got Freddy's Dead. So, wow, I must really like this franchise, because out of nine, I'm already talking about how much I love this movie at number six. So then... At number five, we got Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. This was always one of my more least favorite Freddy films, to be honest with you. I never really appreciated this one. Now, I remember as a kid, it was probably the first Elm Street movie I watched. Because my first vivid memory of Freddy is the bus scene. And I remember being freaked the fuck out by that bus scene. So, there's that. This movie does have a very important place in my childhood. But at the same time, when I watched it as an adult, I always just thought it was kind of dumb. I didn't feel like it... I just didn't like the way it was flowing. I don't know. There was something lacking. Now, in recent years, and for a long time, some people have realized that there, 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 there is an element put in by the writer that is obvious to some, not obvious to others, of a very homosexual film. Right, basically the idea of that the main character is a man struggling with his sexuality. He's gay, maybe he doesn't quite realize it. Yes, one hundred percent, that's there. Now I watched this movie in the early two thousands or two thousand tens, knowing this, and it still didn't really work for me. But for some reason, this last time I watched this movie, I really enjoyed it, and it really made it come up on my list. Freddy's Revenge is subtle. And not so subtle in what it's trying to say subtextually, but it's also really freaking fun. I love the idea uh, nowadays, just for this last viewing, I love the idea of Freddy trying to possess someone in the real world 
and and make them do the killing for him. I love the performances. I love the characters. I love the kills. I love the gnarliness. I even love when Freddy comes into the real world and starts slashing everybody at that pool party. And that dumbass kid touching the electric fence. Like, what the fuck is that? It's so ridiculous. It's so fun. But I really like this movie. And I think it's very much ahead of its time. It's got a campiness to it as well. It is considered the most gay of all the Elm Street movies. And it is. And the more and I progress in my life, the more and more I love this film for being exactly what it is. So at number five, Freddy's Revenge. At number four, Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason, y'all. This movie shouldn't have worked. They were trying to make this movie for a long time. This movie shouldn't have worked, but it does. You don't bring Kane Hodder in, strike one. And that's the only strike I got, really. Man, this movie is sleek, it's fun, it's cool, and it is a Freddy movie. But it has an interesting enough story. This chick and her boyfriend who's in the insane asylum, and it gets back to that idea. Because in the Freddy movies, they kind of lose, after three, into four and five, they kind of lose the idea of trying to stay awake. That was one of the most scary things to me. And the, the, the Elm Street franchise when I was a kid was being forced to stay awake. I hated going to sleep when I was a kid. All I wanted to do at night was read my comics. And I had, you know, a small box of them, but I would read them over and over. All I wanted to do was read my comics. I would stay up in my bed as late as I could reading those comics. And I'd fall asleep. And as soon as I woke up, at any moment, I never tried to go back to sleep. I just woke the fuck up. And I went back to those comics. I just wanted to read comics, watch my cartoons, and then go out and practice my ninja skills and uh, play uh, baseball. But uh, that's all I wanted. Sleep was scary to me as a kid, almost in a way, right? So I love that idea. And I love that in Freddy vs. Jason, they get back to that. They get back to these kids from Springwood uh, that are forced to stay awake. They're in the insane asylum. The main chick in this movie is so freaking hot. The hottest final girl in any of these damn movies. I promise y'all, I still have a thing. Oh my goodness, I'm sprung. Hold on a second. Whew, I gotta, I gotta calm down. Ah, I like the movie. It's got a lot of CG shit in there that kind of throws it off. But Jason's used well. Freddy's used well. I love the fight. I love the ending. I, I really like the movie. So... I know, it doesn't necessarily need Jason to put this movie at number four, but it doesn't hurt, man. I love this movie. Freddy vs. Jason, number four. At number three, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. This is the one that Fable didn't really like, but most of the rest of us kind of did. To me, there is a perfect trilogy in the Nightmare series, and it's one, three, and seven. This one, right? New Nightmare is a very meta film. Before Wes Craven made Scream, he did this as his attempt at meta. I think he more successfully went horror meta with Scream, but this was a very valiant first approach. The idea of how do we bring back Freddy, right? Well, the idea of putting Wes Craven in the film, he's writing this movie, he he basically has trapped this parasitic dream demon in a movie script, but now he's loose again, and they have to write a new movie to have Heather Langenkamp come back, and she's not the greatest performer, but... The character of Nancy is solid in these movies, and I think this is her best performance in the entire thing. It's got a kid that doesn't feel cheesy to me. I don't mind the kid in this movie. I love the Freddy redesign, even though Wes Craven himself said, uh, maybe not so much, but I really like this movie. I thought it was fun. I really love. I remember being a kid watching this. I guess it came out in 94, so I'm like 13 years old. And I remember watching it, and this was the first time I was really ever seeing anything about like any kind of thing that, that that would be considered meta, where like the movie is in real life, there's the movie there, and now we're outside of the movie. I thought that was so fascinating as a kid, which doesn't surprise me that I got into the work of like people like Grant Morrison, for instance. Um, and I'm really big into that idea of the story within a story within a story, sometimes. Um, not always so much. Uh, Sandman does that a lot in the comics. If you love Sandman... The TV series, by the way, you need to definitely read the comic. And if you read the comic and you like the TV series, you definitely need to check out the uh, Amazon Audible. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but I could get an Audible link, actually. I need to do that. Especially since Sandman's out. That's a good idea. Anyway, 
That being said, check out Sandman. It's good. For if you, especially if you like dream stories and stories about stories. Um, anyway, my first viewing of like a, a meta type movie, it really affected me. It really impacted me. I love the redesign. I love the sleekness of this movie. So definitely very high up. At number three, I'm going Wes Craven's New Nightmare. At number two, Will the Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors is amazing. I, I love this fucking movie. The Dawkins song is brilliant. Lawrence Fishburne's awesome. I care genuinely about every character in this movie, and that's why it stands up. Some of the best Friday the 13th movies, some of the best Halloween movies, have characters I give a shit about. You get what I'm saying? That's why I always say that the best summer camp slasher film is not any of the Friday the 13th, but it's The Burning for me, because The Burning has characters that I I care about. And my favorite Friday the 13th movie, I think, is part two, because they all have characters I care about in some kind of way or form or fashion. Same with Dream Warriors. All the kills are the best. They're memorable. The fucking puppet marionette with the, like his tendons or blood vessels or whatever freaked me out when I was a kid. The welcome to primetime, bitch. Everybody remembers that one. The syringes. Dream Warriors is iconic. It is amazing. Solid performances. Cheesy at times, but for the most part, super freaking solid. And I think Robert England's best performance as Freddy is in this movie. This movie slaps, y'all. Frank Darabont, who we were talking about earlier in our Walking Dead chat. We were talking about Frank Darabont. Frank Darabont was a one of the co-script writers here. Wes Craven created the story, then had to go off to do Deadly Friend, I believe, at the time. And then Frank Darabont and his partner came in and, and fleshed out the script. But I love this movie. Dream Warriors at number two. And at number one, it's the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. We would not have these movies. We I would not be here tonight talking about this without this first movie. Wes Craven, what a genius. He was able to create iconic horror films across three decades. Nobody else does that. He, cre he, he revolutionized horror in the 70s with Last House on the Left and Hills Have Eyes. And then he did it again in the 80s with Nightmare on Elm Street. And he did it again in the 90s with Scream. He's given us two of the most iconic slasher uh, I, uh, villains. Most, one, two of the most iconic slasher characters ever with Ghostface and Freddy. Creating this character out of stories that he was reading about. About people plagued by nightmares, dying in their sleep, trying to keep themselves awake, forcing themselves to stay awake. Their parents trying to get them down. He understood all of this, was able to tell a story from a teenager's perspective, you know what I'm saying? And was able to make, once again, I care about every character here. The revolving room, the death of Tina, Nancy's struggle, the bathtub scene, the home alone bit at the end, even the kooky, crazy Freddy arms. I fucking love every bit of it because it does get sinister. It does get dark. That moment when Freddy's like, no, this is God. They perfect it over the next few movies, especially in Dream Warriors. But right here, the raw, primal fear of what Freddy is, what he represents, what he brings, even the fearful nature of his charm. The fearful symmetry of it all is prevalent and present in the first movie. So, at my number one, it's got to be nothing more or nothing less than the original. So, to recap, at number nine, the 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street, shit film. At number eight, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Yeah, I don't like this one. At number seven, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Yeah, I don't like this one either. At number six, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. I really like this one. At number five, Nightmare on Elm Street. Number two, Freddy's Revenge. I love this more and more every time I watch it. At number four, Freddy vs. Jason. Love this film and the sexiest final girl in all of these damn movies. At number three, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. My first experience with Meta, and it was a love affair that never ends. And at number two, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Come on, man. The Dawkins song alone is enough. And at number one, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Those are my rankings for the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Will we ever get another one? I don't know. What are your thoughts? What are your rankings? Let us know in the comments down below right now. Station. Pop, pop. This is Pop, Pop, Boom.